Hi YouTube, Darth here. I wanted to talk about some specific experiences I've had in Battlefield Hardline this last week and what I think it means for the Battlefield series as a whole. The footage you're seeing is from a game of Hotwire on Dust Bowl where Sully does the flying and the enemy team does the dying as I go on a very, very long kill streak. I'm using this round to illustrate something I've noticed in Battlefield Hardline. If you have a competent team that plays the objective, knows the map, and knows how to execute, you're going to utterly dominate the enemy team. On the flip side, if you're a lone wolf and an uncoordinated team, you're going to to get rolled harder than any other battlefield I've ever played. I've played nearly every battlefield since 1942 and I have to say that star players and squads on teams can make a big difference in previous games but not to the extent I've seen in Battlefield Hardline. If the teams are just a little bit in favor of one side or the other it seems to snowball out of control with extreme rapidity. This is especially apparent during the heist game mode on Bank Job. I think this happens for a variety of reasons, but first and foremost, I think this means that the focus on competitive play is a huge success. If one team brings the skill and the other team brings the scrubs, it's going to be over pretty quickly. Take this round of Hotwire as an example. Sully and I completely dominate in the transport helicopter and all we needed was a little communication to notify each other when the enemy chopper was up. Once it went down, we could easily pick off every last enemy vehicle. It really wasn't even a challenge once we were coordinated as our team didn't have to do a whole lot to pick up the pieces. This gap of team play doesn't just extend to the air in Hotwire as you can repeat this feat on the ground by simply having teammates to coordinate where vehicles go and keeping those vehicles repaired. One engineer can keep a vehicle up nearly indefinitely. It's really a trivial matter to completely dominate a team that is only playing for enjoyment. As I said earlier, Heist is another example of where coordinated team play very much makes a difference. I've seen both sides go on crushing runs where the other team just gets crumpled and run over. Generally, I see the criminals get caught in their spawn more than the law enforcement on this map, but I think there are some balance issues with Bank Job and it's not necessarily the game mode's fault. So why does Hardline seem to favor playing the objective and having a coordinated team so much more than other Battlefield titles? While I partly believe it to be a combination of map design, lack of server balance, new players, and low time to kill, I think it ultimately comes down to slippery slope gameplay. Slippery slope mechanics mean that whenever you, as a player, lose an asset in the game, it becomes harder for you to win. Chess is a good example where whenever you lose a piece it generally becomes harder to win. So you try to make even or better trades to put your opponent on that side of the slippery slope while trying to checkmate their king. At least I think that's the idea, don't quote me on that as I probably couldn't beat a 5 year old in chess. A more contemporary example would be StarCraft. As you build up your resources and army in that game, you're making strides against your enemy. Anytime you are dealt a setback, it hurts you more in the length of the game. Losing a worker earlier on means losing out on the thousands of minerals which that worker might have collected through the course of the game. This is why early raids that succeed generally mean the end of the game in StarCraft. So what does this slippery slope mean for Battlefield Hardline? In Hardline, a well-coordinated team can exploit early weaknesses in the enemy team to deal them early setbacks. Early setbacks mean a lot as it potentially puts the coordinated team in better map position. On Conquest, this means they can spawn at flags or otherwise just on forward position squadmates. It also means that the enemy has their tickets reduced which makes victory that much farther away. Imagine how hard it is to come back on a map where the enemy controls everything. This degenerative state for one team can happen pretty quickly in Battlefield Hardline, especially on game modes like Heist where the tickets do not regenerate. On Hotwire, defeating the enemy chopper can mean that no vehicle is then safe and being the only vehicle in the air makes it that much easier to remain the only vehicle in the air. That last bit is also true of aircraft in Battlefield 3 and 4. From this Hotwire match, you can see how the smallest weakness in the enemy is being exploited to great effect. Sully and I aren't capturing points, we're just making sure that the enemy cannot maintain theirs for very long. When their helicopter comes up, it goes right back down. If this were a match of heist, it would be a matter of keeping the enemy off the bomb and making sure that when they grabbed it that they were foiled. That game mode obviously requires a bit more coordination than simply a two-man team, but I can guarantee you that a team that is on voice communication against one that is not is going to utterly wipe the floor with its enemies. These small advantages build up quickly in Hardline and become the slippery slope that ends games in massive ticket differences and in a matter of minutes. But the slippery slope also has a counter in the comeback mechanics of the game. In Battlefield 3 and 4, these are generally really strong. For for example, in Rush, if a team can plant and detonate a single series of NCOMs, their tickets are entirely replenished. On Conquest in Battlefield 3 and 4, this comeback mechanic comes in the form of strong vehicles like air and armor, which in the right hands can generally wipe out swaths of enemies. This is the paper to the enemy's rock. These comebacks force the enemy to regroup and generally resets the game state to equilibrium. Not so in Battlefield Hardline, where even the vehicles in Conquest are generally vulnerable to small arms fire and grenades. What would normally be a comeback mechanic is rendered much more vulnerable. But wait you say, I've already had plenty of games in Hardline where I've come back. 
Yes, I'm sure that can happen, as it can happen in just about any well-designed game. But in Hardline, more so than other Battlefield titles, the momentum of the game is going to stay with the team that coordinates the best and plays the objective, especially on competitively focused game modes like Heist and Hotwire. I'd like to pause and say that by pointing this out, I'm not at all suggesting that it's a bad thing. It's something that you'll all need to be aware of as you are playing Battlefield Hardline. So this bodes really well for competitive play and teams that play competitively, especially for coordinated groups of players. But what about the rest of the general population? I'm willing to guess that a lot of us play as lone wolves and not necessarily with a coordinated group at all times. In this case, I think it's going to require a lot of personal restraint to not go bananas when you see blueberries doing what they do best, which is absolutely nothing. That's a bit cynical though, and I've had my fair share of wonderful teams. But what can you do when your team isn't playing the objective at all and is generally being steamrolled? Well, if you have enough courage to play through that situation, you can learn a lot about how to be an inconvenience to the power players on the enemy team. Think about what the enemy team is doing to consistently exploit your team. Try to be the player that breaks that particular play up. Not every coordinated team is going to have an exploit that you can take advantage of, and in the end, it may just be a learning experience. My best advice in that case would be to play the objective as hard as you can and take the experience to heart. Even when you get absolutely crushed, you'll tend to learn something. I record a lot of my worst gameplay and review it later to see what I did wrong. Oftentimes, while I'm playing, I get absolutely frustrated and can't think straight. Reviewing the same footage later makes it a lot easier to see where I messed up and how I can avoid that mistake in the future. Regardless, be sure to stick with it. If you are able, get a winning group put together and play as hard as you can. Exploit those enemies' weaknesses and make them suffer for their small mistakes. I think you'll find that it really pays off in Battlefield Hardline. That's it for this video. If you liked what you saw, be sure to leave a like before you go. If you're new around here, please take a look at my channel and consider subscribing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, YouTube.